Park of Alameda of Santa Maria la Rivera, Saint Mary la Rivera. It is the very famous park within a colony, as we can, as we say it. And as you can see, uh, it is around three o'clock of the afternoon. Even though being a day within the work days, it is a work day. So it is very calm here. Not it isn't just famous because of being in the middle of a colony. It is famous because it has this kiosk, the Moorish, the Moorish kiosk. <clears throat> now we're we're facing the south front of the kiosk, uh, and that is the principal entrance. So we're gonna get close to know better and then you will find why it is being called or known as a Moorish kiosk. So there you have it. The Morif Eagle is a representative of the Mexican flag eagle but it was created around the end of the in the end of the 19th century but the history of this kiosk it was that it wasn't it wasn't created and placed here this park is in this park is its second home. <coughs> but as for now, it has more than a, more than a hundred years of existence. So, as you can see. All the motives remind of this Arab uh, design. With a combination of classic motives, uh, little classic motives. <coughs> This kiosk becomes the most representative construction of this place of Santa Maria la Rivera. So During all the years there have been restorations and the last one just made a good work because for some years it was just left alone and of course rain, sun, wind take it all for this kiosk so 
if you are going to visit Mexico City just be sure to come to this kiosk and see it for yourself in the whole detail have a uh, selfies few photo stamps take the memory for this centurial kiosk <clears throat> So let's get back to this kiosk and take a round trip on the park. Originally this parks this park was called to Alameda for the Alamo trees. Now it just populated of a different kind of trees that you can see. It gives you a very refreshing shadow now that is very well, that we have a very clear sky. People just came here to have a relaxation time it uses it to pass to cross it afterward you can came here handle a little and nearby you have some restaurants that you can visit let's let's say that this is gonna be the first part of knowing this park because we can come on Sunday and see all kinds of activities that goes around on a weekend <clears throat> if you see this kiosk from a map you're gonna find that it is located just in the right center of the neighborhood <clears throat> and it is a very characteristic neighborhood because it has now a mix of modern we can say modern because there are constructions from the 1950s 70s mixed with ni uh, 19th century buildings like this one This is a museum. Of course, before it was not. But now it belongs to the Geology Institute of the National Autonomous University of Mexico. <clears throat> the pandemic has restricted access to these museums. <clears throat> But we can have a visit and, and so next time I'm going to come here with you and showing you what you can find that makes a very typical museum from this neighborhood. This is local local expositions. Sometimes they bring uh, paintings from local artists <clears throat> and we are connected on Wi-Fi too because the Mexico City government has established some Wi-Fi points, several Wi-Fi points for people to get connected because not everyone can bring that uh, 
cellular data sometimes and you can count on this Wi-Fi spot to connect your telephone, your computer and stay connected. We can see here a local music man. Making some good riffs. <clears throat> that whistle in the... I don't know if you can hear that whistle. We know it, it's a very typical sound from Mexico City neighborhoods where knives uh, a filator we can sharpener that's the knife sharpener sound to call all the people for for to leave out and and makes them sharp their knives so it's a person who gives a local service <coughs> There you can, there you can have that 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 uh, little shop place. You can have some f f mm, fresh paletas, <laughs> as, we, as we tell it. And it's very typical that the kids after school come here to have their, their snow, their favorite snow. Water mm, and ice cream. These, <coughs> these fountains are not always turned on. Sure it makes a beautiful spectacle when they are turned on, but look. This is very relaxing and calm place. Let's see. And in here in Mexico City, it is now being open sometimes to make make these spaces for dogs every morning even afternoons people bring, bring here their dogs and as you can see there is no grass in here for every person who brings their dog to have a stroll I mean he can play in here as you can see this person There you have it. This is little dog. This couple of dogs are already getting ready to play. So in Mexico City we can find these kind of spaces dedicated just for dogs. And it's usually all clear with of grass for them to enjoy a while. And there you have it. There are families that ob obviously doesn't have just one dog, they can have two or three. <laughs> or sometimes the dog sitters bring about 10 dogs to ride in here and they can 
just hang out and have fun not just being inside of the their houses so it's a very very long space in the park for them to run and have fun they're all sitting, sitting here <coughs> This is near the north face, the north part of the park. As you can see, this is a different construction. This is about <clears throat> the 1980s, 1990s, it was constructed. The buildings of, of apartments are over this little mall. That, it, that, it, that you can find in the north part of this, this Alameda of Santa Maria La Rivera. Here you can have some pizzas, sushi, ice cream too, and bread, coffee and bread. In that place down there is El Globo. But uh, I wanted to get back to this statue, this little monument. You see, in, it's, it is a constant in Mexico in general that, ha that we have this statue of Miguel Hidalgo, which, is the, which it was the initiator of the Mexican independence in the 19th century in as you can see here this year 1810 yeah, we usually don't have some some statues don't have a plate for for little snow which or who or who was the author and then we have our hero or one of the most representative heroes of the nation that that has become the symbol of Mexico independence When the pandemic hit and it was closed down this park, most 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 of the park were closed. You can you didn't have the chance even of take a walk. It was just closed. Now that this has uh, become a normality to to live from home. The park itself has been visited by the local neighbors and during the week it is not as populated as, as in the weekend as I was saying <clears throat> around the park there are still other business And every neighborhood has their particular places, unique places. Well, this is a change of coffee and bread. But in this corner, as you can see, this, look this corner. <clears throat> this is more a building of the 1950s or 50s, as you can say. Here. 
that is a restaurant which particular business is to make quesadillas big tortilla with mm, there are big tortillas they are like about more than 12 inches 15 inches tortillas with food and you can have a, one of those quesadillas and get a good meal there so there you have this 50s architecture with the, with the neoclassical and classical buildings you see we are we are just seeing this this street it is known as Dr. Atl Atl comes from the Nahuatl language and it means water it's like Dr. Dr. Water that was the name that Gerardo, the painter Gerardo Murillo took itself to represent his name and his and his artistry This building only is, is a team. That was a little museum before, and now it was changed to a restaurant with a gym. Even here, there were taking this parking space to make public exhibits, concerts, movie showings but that changes from time to time this park it was also famous because uh, the contemporary artists known as contemporary artists novelists painters writers used to hang around it in here there's a mexican novel known as the size of the hell of Arturo Suela who make this part a uh, principal character of the novel talking about a century long history in which this this Almeda of Santa Maria la Rivera is a protagonist. Buenas tardes. That's a neighbor. Another couple of restaurants, one from Oaxaca food, another sushi. Being this uh, neighborhood, there are schools nearby. In Mexico, there are public schools and there are particulars or private schools. This is a private school. in this park and it has and this park has has seen some changes I remember I I didn't live around here when I was a kid but I, I like to pass and I, I was very attracted of the kiosk and made me curious about this park now that I have living around here, <coughs> I've seen changes, sometimes very good changes, sometimes 
very bad ones but I just fell in love and made and have been comfortable comfortable to be around this park living here we have two other business this is Kolobok it has now a coffee in the middle around this it's a, another coffee station and Kolobok has established in here for more than 10 years now and they, they give Russian food so there you have it you can you can come here <coughs> take a walk around the park and go to eat some Russian food I have an ice cream in this place which is a very very famous change not exactly change but there are many uh, stores business known as Lamy Chocana where you can have water or ice cream and water drinks of Mexican and typical Mexican fruits and another cafe that has taken the name of this Alameda Cafe Alameda and there you have the iconic Moorish kiosk in the front of the business This is Chopo's Cafe. It's a new business around Cafe Alameda. But you you know what? When you, you come here and you have coffee and there is like no much people you can stay uh, a long time enjoying a coffee. And the weekends it's a little more full but it's still enjoyable for the place this is a little food truck that belongs to this cafe this is dedicated for burgers not open in this moment but hey have the option of taking a burger or a coffee and some piece of cake before uh, um, before there were not these places to park your bicycles as in here but we are lucky we're in luck now because the Mexico City government has implemented places to park your bicycle because they have the plan of gradually become this city more bicycle possible so let's get back to the music kiosk and now that we just have a round trip around the park then uh, I'm going to talk with you about the history of this kiosk so as, as I was telling you before this kiosk wasn't really placed here for the first time yes there was a park but 
it was just created a place in the Alameda Central Park before. So let me let me take some remindings because this this uh, park is located between two streets that would be Salvador Diaz Moran and as I told you before Dr. Adl and it, it is a the park it is the equivalent of the of one block of the neighborhood Santa Maria neighborhood so the history of this kiosk dates back to the 19th century and it was designed by an engineer known as Jose Ramon Ibarrola it was created for the Universal Exhibition in New Orleans and then once in the 1884 in the final years of the 19th century that took place in, in, in New Orleans and after after that Universal Exhibition it was taken back to Mexico but from the beginning of its construction the engineer of of this kiosk faced the problem of not having the foundries in Mexico with the capacity to make his dream completely true that it was this iron structure but thanks to Andrew Carnegie who was owner of the first major steel company in Pittsburgh this kiosk came to life so he have to go a long way to make through this this kiosk later that structure from Pittsburgh was transferred to Chicago and from Chicago to San Luis Missouri Fair and then participate in the New Orleans exhibition universal exhibition as a representation of Mexico when the exhibition concluded then this pavilion arrived to Mexico City but it wasn't installed in here as we can see it was installed in the biggest and most famous park of the Mexico City known as Alameda Central we're gonna have a visit later in that Alameda Central <clears throat> when it was there <clears throat> this pavilion, this kiosk were used to hold events of national notary where they announced prizes they had movie exhibitions uh, music presentations and because uh, not all the people know the name of the the creator of the engineer of Jose Mar Ramon Ibarrola and so those details the people around that time began to say that it was created in China it was created in some Arab country 
because every everything of this reminded them to the oriental places <clears throat> When it was in the Alameda Central, the former president Porfirio Diaz, which was a famous uh, president known for his 30 years of ruling the country, which gave, gave him the name of a dictator, one of the most famous dictators from Mexico, used it to celebrate, to commemorate the Mexico independence and hold every year of celebration. But he needed to there 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 one Porfirio Diaz order to make another monument to honor the the other former president Juarez which if you know, if you've heard of his name, he was famous for confronting the French, the French Empire <clears throat> and winning over them. So Porfirio just thought of make uh, another monument known as Hemiciclo to Juarez. And the place where he he is going he wanted to build it it was the place occupied by that but this Moorish that this Moorish kiosk and so they have to transfer this Moorish kiosk to another place and the, and the place was in here in the center of some of the neighborhood of Santa Maria la Rivera Santa Maria la Rivera being uh, some of the very new and elegant uh, neighborhoods of the middle of the 19th century <coughs> received this, this kiosk very presently <coughs> and since that time has become the iconic kiosk of this neighborhood as 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 it's been known it is been called Moorish because the symbols the Islamic ar architecture for this arcus these columns look the detail in the columns if you happen to see another islamic constructions you will see the resemblance it's really really impressive you can even pass a, a, a lot of time contemplating all these details is really 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 impressive for me it it is something i something i admire admire so much and well I'm gonna interrupt a little to this fox there to let you see the dome from the from below and you will know look
You see, this is this dome is incredible. <clears throat> and with the combination of these designs makes it more 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 impressive. This monument, as I told you before, it has passed a lot, lots of issues because mm, when it was new, obviously it was very, very visited. You could see from here the people having strolls. And local governments tend to take care sometimes, even neighbors, but not always. Here is this rounding park. <clears throat> so, Besides of, of this and the importance of this construction, it wasn't until 1972 that it was declared as an artistic monument of the nation by the National Institute of, uh, of Anthropology and History. And today, as yes, you can see, this is still a meeting point for all the inhabitants of this beautiful, uh, this beautiful and historic neighborhood, and and for and as for anyone who wants to visit it, as you can see, uh, you can have a meeting with your friends have your dance classes sometimes they do yoga or just have some good time outdoor hanging around these This is the most recent restoration that has occurred to this kiosk and dates back for about 10 years. I don't remember exactly the year, but very, very much of the details, they were like destroyed. Uh, they were vandalized sometimes this this protection that had they were even vandalized that one just save it not just disappear but you save it but it is used even for <clears throat> thinking placing cables and things for corners and concerts The view from here is very pleasant. Imagine the, the view from the top of the pavilion of the dome. After the restoration, obviously there were new restrictions because it was um, hard to make the people to be aware of taking care of these places because uh, like in this art it was spray painted they have to regularly come to clean it and the floor it wasn't 
made uh, before la, of, of this wood it was a type of a uh, marble so that changed too because they took advantage to have skating uh, use it like a skating uh, place and it became damaged so bad very damaged so now th this being good it is ultimately forbidden to skate or skateboard in here you can do that in outside this kiosk because you have a lot of space to do it <clears throat> This kiosk is having a protagonist of even of films, commercials, and this uh, Moorish aspect is very well recognized every time you see it in films, commercials, and soap operas on the TV. So every every everyone who visits here finds it as as an incredible place. Around around the kiosk you have spaces to walk have a ride with your skateboard even your bicycle the kids here in the weekends comes to play football here in the day sometimes there are uh, political gatherings or government local government gatherings for announcement to the neighborhood I'm gonna ask you to imagine every morning at 9 a.m. the people come here to exercise and dance so they they come during one hour to make exercise dancing and I, they're very dedicated there are uh, young people moms that come to exercise after they have delivered they they had taken their kids to the school not good that we are getting back to school So this this kiosk is still it's a very very magnetical representative place. I mean, maybe it's like too much if you would like to be here and there change of places every time but if you have a slow if you like a slow tourist you can be here like two three hours go around there search for a restaurant have a coffee there eat Russian com Russian food have some other coffee ice cream Hang, hang, out, hang out in these ch chairs, in these bench and enjoy walking inside <clears throat> the kiosk.
Yo no llevo la pieza, ¿va? Tú termina. ¿Qué es lo último que haces? <laughs> there you can in the center of the kiosk I hope that doesn't disturb so much This is the national shield of the Mexican flag. The eagle is a snake above an palm, which is the vision, uh, according to the legend of the Aztecs, the vision that they had when they were walking through Mexico, searching for the place where make the foundings of the Mexico Tenochtitlan, Tenochtitlan city and that is that's why the, uh, that image is the representation of the Mexican flag that we are see waving in very happily over the sky so if you want to well, it is a Moorish aspect you, you see here, but we did it, we tend to identificate this architecture with the neighborhood architecture like Porphyrian to, to name this architecture classical with the mix of neoclassical. And recognize this park as a very porphyrian park. But here we are in 20, 20, 22. Look, everybody can have an opportunity to take some pictures of this place. It's very impressive. It's really, really impressive. <laughs> Let's make another round from the exterior for you to contemplate the structure and still the eagle over the dome <coughs> so very fancy isn't it let's see it from the back from the north face of the Moorish kiosk <laughs> See, so there you have it. A very characteristic view. Uh, 
like when I see it from the east side the east face very like How about it? Nice, eh? I don't know, but I just love it. I hope you do too. So look, you can have a walk with this view. Just pick a good hour of the day. I'm come here to enjoy this view. Even in the night, it's not all too illuminated, but you can you can have a ride around here, and it's very very calm. Before it was uh, this colony was a dangerous colony neighborhood. There were like many assaults and you didn't have idea of if anything is going to happen to you if you happen to be here around in the night. Um, most likely you could be assaulted. Now that is not happening again. Even I had just passed walking here in the night and it's very calm there are other dangerous streets but at least around this park in at night you don't have that problem anymore and we hope it stays like that here um, after year from year after the restoration it has been used been used this place for gatherings and especially not not another celebration but especially the day of the dead dia de muertos inside the inside the the, the kiosk you have uh, Lots of, of white, uh, no, it, it is the yellow flowers known as Sempasuchils, flowers of Sempasuchils, which are very characteristic, very typical of the, of the Day of the Dead, with some other sculptures. Uh, they make like fake uh, tombs representing the the dead that are that are being honored. There are artists, there are neighbors, and during two two straight days, this kiosk is all full and dedicated to the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead 
is mainly one day dedicated to the adults and the second day is dedicated to the ch children death remembering your children death <clears throat> so it has been an honor to present you this park and this Moorish kiosk to you and this is an invitation to visit Pesico City to visit a place like this and enjoy our parks um, so <clears throat> I'm going to invite you to to watch my next video because I'm going to I'm going to talk again about this about this Moorish kiosk. Hello Julian here again. So in the next video I want to invite you to see it because I'm going to present you the Alameda Central park where originally this Moorish kiosk was was established for some years after before it was changed for the Emcicla of Juarez by the president Porfirio Diaz so that monument occupied that the place where this Moorish kiosk was and then it began, it was established in here for all times to come so thank you so much for taking the time and visit with me this park the Alameda of Santa Maria la Rivera with this very famous